Smoke and mirrors is one of my favorite parts of game development. I like being able to implement a mechanic that players really enjoy, and to make it work, we have to pull off some magic under the hood. And we're going to use some of that magic by means of an invisible object in our scene to help us get aiming and shooting working in our rail shooter. Oh, if you're just joining us with this series, there is one video before this episode where we implemented the main spline in the player controller and all the project dependencies. I'll put a card up on the screen for that one if you want to code along from the beginning. All right, make sure you hit that like button and let's get on with the project. I'm gonna start by removing these two disabled game objects that we don't need anymore under the player. And I'm gonna turn on the sphere that we have under our player follow game object. I'm also gonna pull the main camera out from under the player up to the root level. And that's because we're gonna start introducing some rotations as the player starts to target things. So the camera is gonna need its own controller. So let's make a new class. We'll just call it camera controller. We just need it to follow the follow target and we want it to also continue to bank the same way that the player does. So let's get a transform reference to the player, one to the follow target. Let's set a distance here. Uh, I know in the inspector I had it minus 22, so let's just put it 22 here and then adjust it. And then a smooth time because I'm just gonna add a little bit of damping. So to damp, we also need to reference to the velocity. So this is really straightforward. It's not really any different than what we had in the player controller. So here we just set the position with a damp and then the rotation to match the player's rotation. So let's try it out and make sure it's gonna work. We just need to add it here to our main camera. I'm going to actually drag the camera controller here up to the very top, just so I can see it easily when I come over here. And let's drag in the references to the player and to the follow target. Yeah, let's try it out. So it looks pretty good. We can go pretty far to either side. We might need to trim that up a little bit, but it looks good. I'll just try moving the main camera back just a little bit more. I think this looks better. I just want to show something really quickly in project settings too. If any of you are having problems with really long reload times where Unity is trying to reload your domain every single time you press play, come in here under editor where it says enter play mode options and just tick this on, but leave reload domain off. It's not always going to go straight into play mode, but if there's nothing to reload in the domain, it won't do it. That might give you a little bit of a speed boost when you're just trying to go in and out of play mode frequently. Next, I want to go into our player input actions. If you recall, we saved that in the settings folder. And I'm just going to change look to be renamed. I'm not going to change the way it behaves at all. I just want it to be given a more suitable name for its purpose. And make sure that auto save is clicked so that this actually gets saved for you. And then let's go into our input reader component and let's add our aim action here. And let's also add one for our fire action. So we're just going to define those input actions and then the same as we have our move property, let's add an aim property. Let's also add a fire action, the same as we have our left tap and right tap. And then in awake, we need references to all those things. On enable, let's add a method to our fire action dot performed. Let's just call it on fire and we'll define that in a second. Let's also add that on disable. We'll unsubscribe to that and let's just make a very simple method. It's just going to invoke the fire action. So now that we've defined aim and fire in our input reader, we can build a weapon system that will use these. So let's make a new class called weapon system. We'll make it a validated mono behavior. It's going to live on the player. And so now we need a few references to things, including the input reader, of course. We can use the self attribute that we brought in in the previous video, one of our open source dependencies. Next, let's define a target point. This is what we're going to shoot at. This is really what's going to make up the smoke and mirrors part of our implementation. I'm going to talk more about that as we implement it. A lot of people would start by setting some crosshairs on a canvas and trying to line everything up. And that actually becomes quite difficult. So by having an invisible object out ahead of the player, we're going to save ourselves a lot of grief. And you'll be able to see that as we get past the code here and into some visuals. But for now, let's keep defining things. We need to define a target distance, which is how far ahead of the player we want this target to be. I'm going to add a smooth time because I don't want this target just to snap to everywhere that we're pointing to. We need 
to define an aim limit. That is how far across and how far up and down do we want the player to be able to aim. We need how fast they're going to be able to aim. We need another speed that'll define how fast we want the player to return back to neutral when they're not actually moving the right stick or the mouse. We're going to need a projectile that we can fire and we should get a fire point. Where are we going to spawn this projectile? So because we're doing some damping again, let's define a vector three for velocity and we're going to keep a vector two, which will be our aim offset. Aim offset being like how far from the center is are we currently aiming? In a week, let's subscribe to the input fire event with a method we'll define as on fire. On start, I want a couple special things here. I want to turn off the cursor and I want to lock the look state to the window so that we don't have our cursor messing up our aiming while we're playing. In our on fire method, what we really want to do is find the direction from our fire point to the target point. Let's get a rotation for our projectile. Just use quaternion look rotation and then we can instantiate it with those properties. Let's just set it to destroy after five seconds for now. Let's make sure that we deregister for our fire action here in on destroy as well. I'm just going to do a quick refactoring here. We could actually do all this in one line. In Rider or in VS Code, you can just hit control period on any variable and you can select inline variable. And so I'm going to do that twice. Now we have a one-liner. Okay, with firing out of the way, we can handle aiming. So let's do that in our update method. So this is very similar to what we've done in the player controller. We want the plane to always be turning to face wherever we've moved our little invisible target to be. So let's start by setting it to its default position, which is ahead of the player. Then we need to get our local position. We're going to get that using the inverse transform point because we only want to change the rotation and whatnot of this from a local perspective. And then if we have something coming back from our aim property, that being it's not vector two zero, then we can change our aim offset to be adjusted by whatever is coming back to us in that property multiplied by our aim speed times time dot delta time. Clamp it to our aim limit. If there was nothing coming from the aim property, we are going to slowly lerp back towards zero. And then we just apply that to our local position. And then we transform it back into world coordinates. And then let's smooth damp this to the desired position and Copilot almost had it right, but we want to assign this to our target point, not the actual transform. Okay, that's actually almost all the code we need to make this work. So let's come back into Unity and we need to define a few more things. Let's start by making our actual target point. I'm just going to make it a 3D sphere and I'm just going to call it aim point and I'm going to make another empty game object that I'm going to move our model under and I'm going to add our fire point under there as well. And that's because we want our model and the fire point to always stay the same when they're rotating. So we're going to rotate the model and not the actual star sparrow. So let's move that fire point ahead. We need to add our weapon system to the player and we need to drag in some references. So we'll drag in our aim point. Just checking everything. We need our fire point, of course. And we haven't made a projectile yet. So let's create an empty projectile. We'll need a little script for this just to propel it forward. Now, I've already brought in some assets uh, that we used in actually our previous project, the shoot 'em up project. I'll link those in the description if you're interested. Now, I'm going to use this one here but it's kind of small. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So let's just make a prefabs folder. We'll drag that in there. And then we can remove it from the scene. We need a reference to it in our weapon system. So there we go. That's everything. Let's drag our aim point out there and maybe let's add a material to it just to make it stand out a little bit. I'll just put a new folder here for materials and I think I'll just make something super simple, just a little red material.
want something that's going to kind of stand out a little bit and definitely be different than our follow target. So there we go. That'll work. Okay, I can see it, but it's super small. I'm going to just make it a little bit bigger. Let's try a three. Okay, now it's very visible. You can see where we're shooting at all the time. But we're not quite aiming the plane yet. And you can see that our projectiles aren't moving yet. So we're going to have to get on that script and make a couple of small changes. Just before we make any more code changes, though, I'm just going to press play because I want to show one more trick here. If you were to go to scene view here and you want to see your object moving around while it's playing, select the player, go back into the scene view here and press shift F. Now you can always watch what's going on in the scene view while you can be interacting with your game view in another pane and it, it can help with debugging things a little bit. OK, let's get back to coding. OK, so to facilitate aiming our plane at the target. Let's get a reference to the aim target. And let's also get a reference to the game object that's housing our actual model and the fire point. And let's just call that model parent. And now we need to decide how fast we're actually going to rotate the plane. And then let's clean this up a little bit. The actual role of the plane, let's move this into its own method. We'll just call it handle role. So I'm just going to extract a method here, and we'll put that into its own thing. The rest of this was just moving the position of the plane. So let's just get this out of there. We'll call it handle position. And now we can add another method, and we'll just call it handle rotation. So this one is also going to be a super simple method. All we need to do is point the plane towards the aim target, really. So let's get the direction. Then we just need to calculate the target rotation. And then we can just lerp towards it at the rotation speed. Super simple. I'm just going to define another class here for the projectile. All the projectile really needs to do is move itself forward until it's destroyed. So let's set a speed in the inspector for it. And yeah, update can just travel forward at whatever that speed is times time dot delta time. That's it. Let's come back into Unity. Let's come and find our projectile prefab and we'll add that to it. There we go. We can try 10 for a speed. I think that's that's going to be a little low. Over on our player controller, we made some changes. Let's make sure that we have the aim point in there and our model parent in there. Yeah, let's give it a try. OK, great. Now we can move around the screen. And our ship is aiming towards the aim point all the time. That's great. Uh, it's definitely firing projectiles, but they're definitely too slow. Otherwise, this is looking pretty good. Let's go over to the projectile prefab and just speed it up a little bit. Maybe 50 will do. Uh, I also forgot to change the main camera distance when I was playing with it in play mode before. So let's come over there and just change it to 25 again. OK, let's see how this looks now. OK, I like the camera distance. Let's see how the projectiles do. That's better, but still too slow. They're definitely shooting towards our little point. Okay, this isn't too bad. Let's go back to the projectile. Let's really crank it up. How about 150? I'm also going to restrict the rotation a little bit more, so let's change the aim limit 30 and 15. Let's see how this plays. Yeah. Yeah, this looks really good. It feels really good, too. Now, we had some redundant code left over from last time I'm going to remove, which was the movement range. We don't need that anymore. So let's get rid of that. 
and clean that up. And now let's introduce the last part that we need, which is a crosshair. So let's create a new UI canvas. I'm just going to call it HUD. Now, I've grabbed a free package of crosshairs from the asset store. I'm going to put a link in the description to that. There are, I don't know how many, hundreds probably of different crosshairs here. Look at the mallers. <laughs> There's so many kinds. So I'm just going to pick one. Make sure you change all these to Sprite 2D and UI, by the way. Um, and then I'm going to add an image onto our canvas. I'm going to call it I think crosshair will do. Or now let's call it reticle. Now I'm just going to look for one that I was flipping through before that I kind of like. This one. Yeah. So I'm going to come back to our image and just drag that sprite in there. So it's hard to see. Let's make it twice as big, 200 by 200. And I'm just going to add an outline here. Maybe we can Photoshop something a little nicer later, but uh, this will do for now. I can see that. And so we're going to need a little bit of code just to drive this. Let's come back into here and I'll introduce another class and we can just call it reticle, I think. Let's move it into its own file. I'm going to make it a validated mono behavior because I want to grab a reference to the rec transform. That's what we're going to move around. First of all, we need to reference our target point. And then let's grab that rec transform using the self attribute. And then all we really want to do is change the screen position of this using camera main world to screen point of our target point. And then we just set our rec transform position to that position. I'm going to inline this variable again, same as I did before. Boom, one line. Make it even simpler. Let's make an expression body method. So back on our reticle, let's add that component. We need to drag our target point into it, don't forget. Let's actually just rename this. Let's call it target point. I called it that everywhere else. All right, let's go full screen mode and try it out. Look at that. So our crosshair is always going to follow the target, which soon will be invisible to the player. And the plane is targeting it all the time too. Wow, this looks really good. Still barrel rolls are working great. Okay, I'm really happy with this. I mean, I could just fly around shooting all day now. I'm just going to let it drift back towards the center. As you can see, I'm not touching anything. And it kind of finds that position just 50 out. I think 50 is pretty good now. Maybe we can adjust that later. I wanted to show one more trick before we call it a wrap here, and that is the debug.break statement. If you put this into your code anywhere, it's going to pause the editor at that point of, of execution. So right there, I put it on the on fire. If I play the game now and I press my fire button, it will pause the game for me right when I do that, like so. And now I can go find my player, focus on that, and just step ahead frame by frame if I want to see what's going on. This is super helpful if you're trying to debug a specific time or moment in your game and it's driving you crazy put this statement in there and then you can just walk through what's going on that's a wrap for this episode thank you all for watching next episode we're going to start instantiating enemies which will fly in on their own splines we'll create the splines at runtime and it'll create some really unique gameplay so make sure you hit the like button if you haven't already uh, subscribe and hit the bell to stay up to date with this project and i'll see you in the comments below